All right, so we're uh, live. Welcome back to Trampled Underfoot Podcast. What's going on, Mark? Just working outside, getting a lot of sun. It's hot. It's muggy. Actually, it's Tuesday, uh, but it's just very tiring work. <laughs> yeah, I've spent a lot of time digging. Yeah, I've been keeping track of your your photo, your photos uh, on the Facebooks and and seeing all that. And it's really cool how you're you know you're laying the 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 foundations. No pun intended. Um, you're setting yourself up for a successful, you know, as much as possible um, conclusion to the the whole project. Well, here's hoping anyway. I'm I'm going to be I'm building a gravel pad to put a shed on top of that pad, and then turn it into a uh, a woodworking shop. And we're getting to the point to where I'm almost ready to order the gravel, but I got a few more steps. I got to take, but it's been a lot of hard work up to this point. And there's been other projects along the way. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I forgot that when we were talking earlier in the green room, um, it sounds so much more professional if we had a green room. Yeah. yeah. Um, that I've had forgotten the bit about you having to deal with the liner that was in um, sort of interwoven with, grass and and whatnot so all that is part of the uh the yeah. the project it's like cleaning up shop to get it all leveled yeah. and ready and all the things in between um just to get it to the point where you're at now and um i mean the the good stuff is yet to come yeah well here's hoping i mean it's been a lot of hard work and i'm hoping to i'm hoping to have about this half of it done this year and then the next half next year and finally get a chance to enjoy this stuff. But we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. The other thing that, that happened is that um, Linda Lindsay shared a, a pretty, pretty freaking sweet um, video of her project. That was, that was pretty intricate and amazing. Actually, I sat and watched, I was like, Holy smokes, all the different, you know, things i mean and, yeah this is where rabbit holes go and sometimes see this is why i say i'm a bad influence on people just for some reason i don't know still don't know why on my i was watching a youtube video and over on the right side in the suggested column there was a video called getting dressed in the 14th century and what it was was this uh, i can't remember the youtube channel but we did post it over on our Facebook page, the Trampled Underfoot podcast Facebook page. The video that started it all. It was called Getting Dressed in the 14th Century. And basically, it was a narrated video of a woman putting on each article of clothing that they wore back in the 14th century over in uh, what is now the UK. And I showed that to her and she went to that YouTube channel. And found one from the mid 18th century, from about 1740 to about 1790, somewhere in that area. What a woman wore at that time. And she sat down, she started researching, she really loved it. And she made a complete outfit skirt, petticoat, shift, stay, I mean, everything. Uh, a complete a woman's outfit from the uh, mid to late uh, 18th century. And it really turned out nice. It really looks cool. I and, like the, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'll go ahead and I'll post a link to that video over on the Trampled Underfoot podcast Facebook page. So look for that over on Facebook. Look for Trampled Underfoot podcast and I'll put it up there as soon as we're finished recording this. I like the... Uh the also the backstory of each thing like you know the fact that i, I forget the uh, terminology but what they would wear to sleep is what they'd get up and then add to it to to um you know dress themselves for daily activity and this and that um and the concept of you know 
imagine having to scrub down all that stuff and wash all this. Well, you just had your that undergarment that you could go to bed with, wake up and just add that to and like they did. So that whole thing was an interesting, um, you know, just making you think uh, of how that worked. And, and, and the other bit was, and it's an interesting video, so you guys should check it out, is that the that she used i forget that what what she said that she, that the original people would use but that she used some sort of like reed um some sort of um synthetic plastic reed for the uh, the i guess the pockets of that that one bit that that conforms yeah. to the body um but i forget what material was what people it, used. that that is uh, that garment is called the stays it's similar to a corset but it's not as tight right and they used back in the day, they called it whalebone. It was actually baleen from the whales. It was the plastic of the day. It was flexible. It didn't dry out. What do you mean it, baleen? The baleen are plates, uh, kind of uh, feathery plates that the whales have in their mouths mm -hmm. that they, they open up their mouths and suck in huge amounts of seawater, then force it back out. Gotcha. And uh, krill and little creatures that they eat are filtered out through these plates and they just, you know, chew them up, swallow them and then suck in more water and just keep eating this, these little all the way down to microscopic little creatures. And as a byproduct of whaling, they found that this baleen was very similar to what plastic is now. It was flexible. It didn't dry out. It stayed flexible. It developed a memory. So as they, they they used it to stiffen these garments to form fit the body to give them back support and side and front support. And uh, it would kind of mold to your body and stay that way. And when whaling went, the, went away as a industry, they started using uh, cane reeds like that you make a ret rattan chair out of things like that. Mm -hmm. But, um, and some place, some folks couldn't afford the baleen or the whalebone, whichever you wanted to call it. Um, they would use reeds or even really tightly packed, uh, wool to force down into those pockets to give the garment some rigidity. And basically this is, these were overgarments that were also undergarments at the same time. And most of this was developed over in Europe. And, you know, England is a cold country. So they would wear three, four, five layers of clothing sometimes. And maybe go down to one or two if it was a real hot summer. But the whole thing was to keep warm. And the more layers you had, the warmer you stayed. So. Yeah, but, it, it also seemed like an exhausting endeavor, you know, because we, you know, at least I don't know about the rest of the world, but here, in, frankly, I don't even know about the rest of the uh, country, but uh, heck, I don't even know about the rest of the city. But here in my house, <laughs> all you all you do is put your slide, you slide that big toe and that secondary toe into the flip flop, mm -hmm. right? You, you put on a, a tank top. And some that's short shorts, and you're like at the dough. <laughs> that's me. I tie my shoes maybe let's see three times a week because I only wear that type of shoes when I'm outside working. <laughs> Every other time, it's slip-ons or my flip-flops. I'm with you there. I mean, it's that's just like, and and maybe it'd be different for me if I lived in colder weather. But it's like it's it, an impossible thing to sit with, you know, all all that bulky stuff on for yeah. what. Who you? Yeah. Who are you trying to impress? You know, I mean, she she's a spinner, a weaver, a knitter, and she does demonstrations on spinning yarn, uh, wool into yarn, yeah. and so she wanted a period correct outfit to wear while she's doing these demonstrations yeah. with you know period spinning wheels, and she just decided you know she had knee surgery in November, 
then COVID came along and hit around February. So she decided, you know, I've got the time. Let's go ahead and do it. So she started doing her research on what she wanted to make. She found some patterns, got a hold of these patterns and started ordering the material. And she doesn't like to sew. It's weird to say it, but she doesn't like to sew with a sewing machine. But she's fine with hand stitching. So she did almost the entire outfit by hand with needle and thread using the materials that were period correct, the same materials that they used at the time. She used linen and she used linen threads and the whole thing. Well, I'm just putting putting two and two, which, so that sounds reasonable. I'm just putting two and two together as far as us in mm -hmm. the current er era. Um, so I don't yeah. remember my dad or my grandfather, any of my grandparents wearing short shorts. They all dressed up. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, at least they had slacks on and button up shirts for goodness sakes. I, I never, I saw my dad maybe once or twice with like some sort of style polo shirt, but no, it was always button up shirts, short sleeve for the, for the, the time here, but, and with the pants and stuff and like black or Brown shoes, like, like, like daily shoes, but like what I would call, Boy, you're you're leaving the house pretty fancy. To them was like normal. To me, it's like whoa, whoa, whoa. You better let those dogs breathe. You know, it, it, it's funny you say that, but there's a lot to be said for those button-up shirts because they are a lot of times cooler than those uh, than a t-shirt is, because a t-shirt is nice and snug, where a nice button-up shirt is nice and loose. True. So it doesn't, you know, fit your body so tight. You don't feel like you're, you know, getting squished or anything like that. They are that's much true. cooler. Yeah, but, that, that's true. Um, but, but I'm with you. I didn't see my father in a T-shirt very often at all. Growing up, you never saw him in a T-shirt. He was always in a button-up shirt mm -hmm. for work or, you know, when – but. Uh, he would wear pullover like a polo shirt or a sweater if we were going out to dinner or something like that. Hey, Sometime. Let, uh, let, let me throw this. Uh, this is just random, but for because now I'm thinking about my dad now that we're talking. Um, we took a vacation. Uh, and I've told you before, but we took a up the East Coast vacation all throughout the states. I mean, we went Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh -huh. I mean, we did the whole thing. And then, and we also visited the Capitol. This was in the eighties, and my dad was always, you know, um, it, it, you know, and rightly so for for him, you know, he had lost his his country, had to leave his country, um, and so he always had that in. Well, he had had, and remember, I'm a kid, right? And I'm listening to the rock and roll. Like I'm in my world. Like I'm not thinking yeah. in in these like geopolitical terms, but this. And he had printed out a shirt and hat, accommodating hat, so he could travel to to Washington D.C. as a, representing, you know. And it said Cuba on the front, and on the back said "We'll be free." And then he had a hat with the same thing, like that. And we, and he didn't really wear it until we got to Washington D.C. and we stayed at a, a hotel there. And then we went out the next day to see the uh, the sights, and we went everywhere. And he donned the shirt, and, the, and, his, and I'm like, I was like, "Bobby, no, come on!" Like you know, as a kid, like, "What are you doing?" He says, "That's my problem. You're, you you enjoy yourself. That's my." I'm like, "Bobby, no, no." And so, because as a kid, do you want that attention brought to you? You're wearing he's wearing a blue shirt and with lettering. Yeah. You know those 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 1980s style like they, they they press it on and the hat and so you remember those hats with the with the vents on the side like those trucker hats i guess you baseball slash trucker um i forget what model of but i don't just let's go under let's enjoy he had to wear the and so there's photographs of of us all over washington he's got the shirt and stuff and now thinking back it's a fond memory but at the time i was like oh my gosh yeah yeah well, you wanted to be incognito at that age, unless there were girls around. <laughs> You'd do anything for a girl's attention. Yeah. You'd stand on your head and put that hat and take your, steal your dad's hat, stand on your head and wear it. <laughs> <laughs> 
this but. past week I I came across talking about the um, this whole um, going back in time and the way people dressed and whatnot. I, I did come across and I just remembered it now. So it, it ends up that we we do find subjects along the way. Um, I had never seen this before, but it's the equivalent of MMA, mm -hmm. mixed martial arts, whatever, of medieval times. So what they, I don't know if you, have you ever seen this before? Or? Uh, they call it the ordeal? No, no. I'm not okay. aware. Of so what it is, is there's worldwide competitions and there's an American team and they're insane. These people are insane, like, like another level. So what they do is they forge and they, and they, they have armor like knights and it's pretty heavy duty armor there are exposed parts behind you like in where your knees fold and your elbow like there's exposed areas but you wear a helmet and they've got the chain mail and all that stuff and and then they give you an axe or a sword and they put you in a ring with your competitor and you literally the the, the weapons are blunted so it's not like they're they're sharpened but back then they weren't necessarily sharpened because they were more for right. you know, like like rough cutting through and stabbing and stuff. I don't know that you can stab in this thing. I haven't seen stabbing, but they whack at each other to see who wins freaking axes upside the head, the metal denting, the guys falling to the, and the, the, the issue is to get them to fall and they're mm -hmm. whacking each other and freaking rough housing and this and that. And, and they put the microphone so you can hear the clanking. It is the biggest thrill you could have on YouTube for free. <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing dude okay yeah. see now when you said medieval i thought you meant back in medieval times you're talking about this is modern now yes people doing the midi wow and and let me tell you the Ameri there's an american team and they have different levels like they have jousting <clears throat> and this goes on in europe like they had the front and and they'll have multi like wars but they'll have like a soccer field not a soccer field more like a small a small like corral and they'll have like 20 men on one side from poland dressed in their poland medieval gear and they'll have like like 20 freaking irishmen on the other side and they'll go at it and you'll see them fighting and then they're dropping and then as long you know and they have to wait it out and then they keep fighting until the last man is standing Jeez. and yeah, and the jousting, the, those lances that they're that they're using, they 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 mount the cameras to the actual guy riding on both ends, plus the outside camera, so you could see the action in multi levels. And when they strike each other, dude, sometimes the lances shatter like they would in in the old. And dude, the force I don't know, it's thousands of pounds of force that hits the guy, and they just and there's even dude, you would think smaller weight class this there's women that gear up dude and they fly dude you see them flying and they're, they're, there's one where they she takes they take off her helmet and she's all bloody and stuff and she's and she's freaking out well she gets back on and starts it's just insane dude insane. <laughs> it is insane you when you said jousting it 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 struck something in me did you know that jousting is the official sport of the state of Maryland. No, I didn't know that. Yep. Since 1962. <laughs> <laughs> Jousting is the official sport for the state of Maryland. When I... <laughs> when like, I what? <laughs> that, that's a little bit out of place, right, being that. But when I was in California at a place that I worked, they had in, on the second floor fencing i had never been a, you know that's like a rich people's sports like you know you, you you grow up in it and stuff and in my opinion looking at it like I'd, I'd never been exposed to it um and i worked at the place like as a secretary actually office secretary i took care of any business coming in and going out and stuff and but they had sports different types of and sometimes you'd have enough time to go up and leave a message or this or that, or somebody gets a phone call and you walk up and you stay and watch the different events. <clears throat> and I saw the jousting and I was like, wow, this is 
totally so far from the world that I grew up in, like jousting, you know, what? Jousting or fencing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I saying jousting? I Freudian. <laughs> um, um, what I meant was fencing. I'm sorry. Um, fencing. And what they do is I, I, I don't even, I never even asked what it was for, but they had these cables attached to them. And just the whole thing was so bizarre that I wouldn't, I would not have grown up. And my dad said, son, we're going to involve you in, in fencing activity. Like that's like, it doesn't even cross. I mean, extreme was son, we're going to do judo. That was yeah. the extreme of, of our, you know, thing. put the kid in judo. Um, but fencing is such an exotic. It's just so, something that, you know, people up in, in like a, 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 a well-to-do, you know, yeah. area would do. With anyway, you. I just found it interesting. I, I you know, I, I, I knew fencing went on. I mean, you, you saw it, uh, you saw it in the Olympics and things like that, but I don't think, I know of or even knew of any where you could learn fencing. That's right. Uh, and, and I'm 59 years old. I wouldn't even know where to begin. I imagine if you're into that kind of thing, you'd find it. But, you know, a kid in Medford, Oregon, oh, yes, I want to take up fencing. Well, where do you go to learn that stuff? You While know? you're saying that, I'm just going to do a quick Google and say, well, yeah, fencing okay, classes near me. Well, yeah, now it's easy, but where would you look back then pre-internet, oh. you know? Well, you want me to tell you something funny? <laughs> There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's at <laughs> least six fencing locations near my area that I could go to. <laughs> yeah, well, see, you know, fencing has a whole different meaning for me because that's about all I've been working on for two Two years that is, is fencing true. this yard so you know <laughs> there's a fencing club not not let me see i don't oh even dire God. directions let's see how, how far it says it's so like you're going to show up next week and you're in a fencing outfit with your foil and the whole thing 14 minutes away there's a fencing club there you go <laughs> How crazy is that? Whatever, uh, you know. Yeah. What can I tell you? I don't know. It's it, it it it's kind of interesting now looking back. It may have been fun because you know, watching it in the Olympics and things like that, it's like, you know what, that's actually pretty cool. That's very cool. Yeah. And I think I'm not sure. I mean, you know, maybe somebody could uh, help me out here, but I think what those cables were were for resistance. Just uh, kind of like resistance training. You overcome the resistance uh, on those cables, hmm. and or maybe it's for posture or something like that. Or I don't know. System, but yeah, it's possible. I'm I'm trying know. to think back because I know they had those, you know, point keepers electronic led old school yeah. um on the see, i thought that was built into your pads oh is it i see i don't even know what the heck there's a touch it registers and they were and all the padding it was all white huh. yes. like off white so i thought they could have been a little bit more adventurous and and given us some sort of crazy medieval but I, it was cool whatever um and i think fencing isn't fencing something to do with more to do with the 17 and 1800s as opposed to prior to that when it was just brute force prior to that was mainly battle axes that was the primary weapon right for many years until the crossbow and the bow and arrow the well, no, it, and no, they had swords and stuff back but what i'm saying like the refined you know zorro type yeah thing. it's uh, seen as the chival chivalrous way that yeah. uh, um, would challenge another to a duel. It was the gentlemanly way. That wasn't the armies out there. They were out there with battle axes and pikes yeah. and uh, spears and what have you until the crossbow and the longbow came along. Then yeah. uh, that changed warfare. They kind of dropped the axe. It took yeah. a little bit, but they eventually did. Yeah. 
insane, man. Um, yeah. So nothing that that's that's the one thing. The the other thing I I, I guess I wanted to mention was that um, I did come across a very interesting uh, video this past week as well, and it's super interesting because there's this guy that went online and he went on that Alibaba site, which we were all aware of. And people buy all sorts of stuff from there, you know, and sometimes in bulk or personal or whatever. And it all ships from from China. And um, this guy decided to get the world's <clears throat> most inexpensive automobile and have it shipped to America. Okay. And it's this little red dinghy of a car that has it almost looks like a toy like those tin toys that you would pull back on and release and they go driving off yeah um it's tiny and the windshield curves up like a dome like a i don't even know what to call it it's bubbly shaped and he ordered it and so it arrives he said by the end it cost him he said the price tag was like $900 Oh geez, <laughs> and but it's twelve thousand dollars to ship it. I'll bet. <laughs> yes, he says when all was said and done, it came out to, you know, two thousand something or whatever the case may be. Um, but he said, you know, I guess for his YouTube chat, who knows why he did it. Um, it he he had the 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 adventure to do so, and it ships and it arrives. And it's got cardboard all over it and stuff. And it's literally like it could fit in this room. <laughs> like easily. And it's an electric car, right? And so they unbox it, which is a funny thing. They unbox it, ripping out the and then you see this like this thing, and he's touching it and stuff. The doors open and close um with that car like shut shutting, you know, that sound, that punk that uh -huh. it's got the same, it's got a a, a back, um, um, what you call um, hood or uh, what you call a hatchback thing, where the batteries and the and and the motor sits. It's a motor, and it's got the little plug. It's got a fan. It's got a dashboard. It's got seating for two in the front, seating for two in the back. Tiny, but when you get in it, since it's like egg shaped, it's huge. Like the guys, you know, it's like it's a normal. And so he was constantly surprised at and stuff. Um, and he set it up and and they drove it, and it goes not as fast as a gol uh, golf cart. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, but it drives right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was funny as hell, dude. And it was yeah. equipped with LED lights, headlights, licensed. Because it would have to be built to be a car, to be licensed as a car, it would have to meet current DOT standards, unless he registered as a golf cart. Um, he's got like some sort of lot. He took it out on the road a little bit and brought it back and stuff. And he was mentioning, oh, we don't want to keep it out here too long. You know, yeah, okay. So he doesn't have it street legal yet. Yeah, okay. But it but, didn't go as fast as one would right. hope. Well, you know, I, down there where you're at, I, case, of course, you don't live in a golf community, but there are a bunch of golf communities in Florida, and people just basically live in their golf carts. Yeah. You don't have the Cadillacs. Now you got to have a high-speed golf cart. You yeah. Know? So that might go over down there. Then again, you never know. I don't know. I'm it, about to look for the video. It was super interesting. Um, it's not fast by any yeah. stretch of the – but it's it's got a huge open uh, just wide um mm -hmm. windshield it's i mean visibility is incredible it's an egg just mm -hmm. about it's not really an egg but the front it's you'd have to see it um and boy they they for 2 grand a little over 2 grand they got the but it don't drive that fast it just it kind of drives along it's electric so you don't hear mm -hmm. anything really yeah so it's a weird thing. It's got these little tires on it and stuff. So it's almost so it's like one step up from the Barbie pink Corvette or the pink Jeep. Yeah, no, and he touched like like the it, the it was fabricated incredibly well. Um, there the the actual dashboard 
you it's all how can I put it? Um, it's not as crappy quality as you would think. It's actually well put together, but it's just it's 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 basically you know it is what it is. But if you touch the dash, you can push on it and it moves around and stuff. You know. <laughs> well, you know, see now he's opened up a can of worms here, and anybody thinking about getting into a YouTube channel, this might be it. Order about if they're you know you probably get a uh, uh, a deal if you bought them in bulk. Order about six of them and start trying to hot rod them. You know. Go for yeah. bigger, bigger electric motors and, you know, better lithium ion batteries. And, you know, I, I, I know nothing about electronics, but you can bet that if somebody starts tinkering with one of these ding dong things and gets it to where it'll do. I mean, you know, Colin Furs got a uh, mobility scooter to go 70 miles an hour. It wouldn't be long before somebody would get one of these little suckers to do that too. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You could do it. I mean, you know, I could see that taking off, <laughs> especially if there's an affiliate program to where he could get a, a little, you know, cut off of each one sold. If you have a big property, um, you and you, you could use it driving around in that thing. But then again, you can have a, a quad. Or a tractor or something like that, something you can work with, yeah. Right, or you could have a golf cart, to be honest with you. But the the it looks great, it looks fun. But uh -huh. the bad the bad thing is the speed of it. So it's like if you had like the property to do so and travel up and down it, uh, you'd be putting along. So it's like well, you know, it's depending upon how popular this video is. You give it a year, there'll be people drag racing them. <laughs> Because yeah. you think about it, you you put a uh, 50cc uh, moped engine in one of those things, you're already going faster than stock. So okay. you know people will be hot rodding them. Well, in, in, in one of the videos, because he's got a few, like first he talks about it, unboxing it. On another one, he takes it out for a, for a test run. And the, the video opens up with him like driving towards the camera and then doing a like 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 slide like a little slide sideways slide but it's so slow it's like <sighs> it came out cool the way it looked but you know it doesn't like you go uphill a little uh -huh. bit and you have to keep it pedal to the metal <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah well okay well you're gonna have to link that over on the facebook page because i'd like to see that video definitely i'll 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 link it on our Facebook page. That's face that's trampled underfoot podcast on Facebook. And we usually do that. We um, post links to the, the topics. Uh, if the, there are videos or pictures of it, and we will usually post those over there and you can interact by, um, you know, um, giving us some ideas for shows, future shows and whatnot, and checking it out and, and all that. Um, we also have a, what is it? A uh, website, and it's called trampledunderfootpodcast.com. Um, and so you can go check out our past episodes over there by clicking the Wayback Machine button, and that'll take you into a list of our, our previous uh, episodes. So that's trampledunderfootpodcast.com. And we do do these every Tuesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time and 6.30 p.m. West Coast Time, Pacific right here on the mighty YouTube's Trampled Underfoot podcast on YouTube. That's we'd right. also mention that trampledunderfootpodcast.com is sponsored by Steve Nealon over at Harneal Media. Good guy. You need a website, web store, want some merch designed and what have you, talk to Steve. He's your guy. He can fix you right up. So, yeah. so I wanted you. to ask, what's that? No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. What was say, thank you for that, Steve. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Um, I, I was going to ask, so, so I, I, the title for this was the age of aquarium. Yeah. And, um, we were talking earlier, but we never got round to it. And, uh, I was asking you, so when you read that title, what, what did you, what did you think? What well, came up, what came to mind? My, my brain went in about 15 different direction. Cause I am a kid of the 60s. 
And I remember the big thing being the dawn. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, you know, uh, and that song became real big on the radio. I mean, it was all over the place. It was one of those you couldn't escape. Mm -hmm. My dad bought the album. It was a song from the Broadway musical Hair. And I never saw that. A, a movie was made of it and the whole thing. But so my brain went to that. But then I started thinking and got a little bit deeper in it. And as always seems to happen, um, it went back to a lyric I've heard in a song. And in this case, it was Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. We're just two lost souls swimming in a fish bowl year after year. Then when you start thinking about an aquarium, a fishbowl, everything else, you're just kind of in this place, and it seems like everybody's looking at you. You're on display. And that's where my brain basically went. It's funny enough, because that's roundabout, if not almost just about dead on. And I always leave a little wiggle room because, uh, you know, the mind is so... But pretty much that's... You adding the wish you were here lyric is basically my was my intention and it was sort of like a, a little you know i always like music with um little innuendos in it as well as easter eggs as we see with the beatles and so many different bands um through the ages and so with the titles you know that popped into mind it's nothing that i gave it too much thought but i thought to myself age of aquarius age of aquarium being in a, our reality mm -hmm. is what we have around us. We we have a view all around us, and we we're stuck in it. Like this is this is where we're at. You know, these are this is the what we have to work with. Um, even though it may not all if we it may not all be um, rational, it is the insanity that we live in as far as our current, you know, world that we live in and with all the craziness that goes on. So I thought, you know, the hopefulness of an age of Aquarius from the sixties. And then here we are, we're still inside some sort of, uh, you know, containment uh, of like, we're limited and yeah. we're cycling through the same thing. Like we we learn the same things. Our parents, when you're a kid, you have to grow up and learn that the stove is hot. Um, doesn't matter that your dad knew that you, you're not born knowing that doesn't matter that your grandfather knew that, you know, your dad didn't know that we have to, we have to spend X amount of time learning all these things, but you know, it's good because it preserves us in the long run. But at the same time, it's like, we're circling around and around and around. So it was pretty much there with what you said. Funny. Well, enough. And it also got me thinking about the difference between then and now, which we do a lot, but usually in a pop culture sense. But I don't know. I remember the 60s and the hippies and the Woodstock generation and all that other good stuff. The age of Aquarius was kind of related to a new beginning. And it was being celebrated by the younger generation, the teens coming up at the time, as we're coming up, we're coming into, soon to be coming into power. You've had your time, and we're going to throw away a bunch of the strict, old-fashioned stodginess of the 50s. And it was almost like they felt like they were breaking out of bondage or something like that. Yeah, You know, we're not going to follow your militaristic rules. We want freedom. And that was the whole thing. That was the big chant. That was the mantra back there, back yeah. then, was freedom. Yeah. We want the freedom to do. We want the freedom to say. We want the freedom to love and the freedom to think. And as compared to now, I think... Socially speaking, we have less freedom. You are less free to say what you wish. You're less free to do as you wish. You're less free to love as you wish. 
because we're in the aquarium and people are watching. And if you say or do something that goes against their sensibilities, I mean, it used to be, how dare you try to force your morality on me? Now it's accept my morality or we destroy you. So we've kind of gone full circle there. We went from what was seen as the oppression of the 50s in strict and male and female roles to freedom and hope back to another form of oppression under the guise of freedom. But freedom is never mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just, it, it, it kind of, that's, that's the kind of stuff that goes through this head. That's what it's like to be me, to live with me. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it sounds good. It makes for a great sound bite, but on it, living it on a day-to-day -day basis, there is no freedom involved. You know, if you have to fear for what you say, if you have to, if you think you have to be careful of what you're saying, because there will be consequences socially uh, or, you know, career wise, how free are you? There's always, I've been, I've, I've always been very uh, uh, aware of that. There's always, whatever comes out of your, your pie hole, there are consequences to it. Not, evident immediately most of the time but people you know one of the so one of the things is that that i've accepted or have come to the conclusion of realizing is that as an example i'm going to use this as an example but this is basically the point that i, I want to make you and i are communicating mm. at this very moment using the, the 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 conduit of of communication is the english language you and i right now and we acknowledge that and be, and it's quite obvious cuz you and i are exchanging concepts ideas and and so on back and forth and i'm receiving information that you're sending out to me and and vice versa and all that um but i've come to the conclusion that in many cases or most cases even if you're using the same language to communicate to someone, that is not good enough for the amount of possible variation in what people define certain combinations of words as being. So it creates a situation that you, because of, you know, externalities or, um, cultural or um, any set of numbers of, of, of different outlook, people will interpret something benign, can interpret something benign as something completely on the opposite side of the spectrum, as aggressive or as violent or as right. this or that. And so I've come to the conclusion that even though this society at large within the confines of our, let's say, country or localities or whatever, even though we're speaking the same language, the we're not, the it, we might as well be speaking Martian. Yeah, because um, people are hearing what you say, but they're not listening to what you say. What, when, when, when we are so concerned with, how something is said these days, we completely and totally ignore what's being said. You can literally call a person the lowest form of life on the planet, but if you say it the right way, they'll walk away with a smile on their face, whistling a happy tune. Yeah. There is more concern with how something is said. And there's a lot also to be said for those who look for something when there's nothing there. If I say the sky is blue, 
Well, you don't think that the earth is brown? Well, I'm not talking about the earth. I'm talking about the sky. Well, what's the matter with the earth? You know, yeah. there is no, it, it, in making a statement that the sky is blue, there is nothing there. There is no other ulterior motives. There, there's nothing else there. Some things just don't mean anything. So I think we all need to take a little bit of a chill pill and stop trying to look for other meanings when there isn't any other meaning, you know? Well, we'll so things don't mean anything. Well, we'll see. So, so I'm I'm of the belief that that uh, different than than what what you said in that you know in in that I believe people can and should, if they so choose, go hog wild with their assumptions, this, 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 and that. All fine and well up until the moment that you breach <laughs> the, 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 the line, which is, you know, inflicting upon another person, or um, what's the word, um, fraud, fraudulent, you know, trying to to, to squeeze someone for money with some sort of scam like you, you, you could have all these things right and you could you could live in your your fantasy poo poo um, pony world if you choose however when it comes to the golden rule that is something that cannot be retracted because um, that would be the end of life as we know it but that doesn't matter anymore that doesn't matter anymore because now, these days anyway, the, what, what I'm seeing is you don't even have to do anything. Somebody just has to make the uh, accusation. How do you prove a negative? How do you disprove a negative? You know, you can't. If someone says, for instance, and I know we're getting political here. If someone says you're a sexist. How do you prove you're not? No, you 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 can't you you can't do it by by doing non-sexist things. There the is question always remains. <laughs> you know, it's the old it's the old gotcha line. Have you finally stopped beating your wife? There is nothing you can say to that that that'll tamp down the. Uh... There is nothing you can say. There's a book by. A gentleman called Franz Kafka. I know you're not much of a reader, but if you read anything, it's called The Trial. And basically the premise is a gentleman in this society is arrested. Can, can I, let me just interject. It, it's not that I'm not much of a, a reader. The, the, the long book format, because of my visual thing, has been, you know, on the outs, but I, I read on a constant basis, uh, yeah, uh, searching. I get it. Some people just don't like to sit down with a book and read. And I get that. A lot of yeah, people don't. I just, the reason I put that out there, just because in, in the year 2095, I don't want some, some guy <laughs> saying, this no, guy. I don't need you to order it. <laughs> That's not what I meant. See what I mean right there? I said, okay, I know you're not much of a reader. This is how we are. We have gotten to the point to where you felt you had to defend yourself. Rightfully I so. Wanted, I just wanted I just wanted to add that little extra <laughs> bit for future reference, for goodness sakes. All I meant was you don't like to read recreationally, and I get that. I understand. Sure. No, that's people the, see you see, we're speaking Greek and freaking you know Taiwanese right now. I love to read dude. I do that all the time. I read recreationally, I just don't read long book for well. It depends, but I don't do that as far as like the traditional sitting with a novel and this and that. Mm -hmm. I don't do it. And yeah, you're right. Yeah, I right. am I am making it clear, and okay. it's kind of the point of what we're all talking about here. <laughs> okay. well, it is the point of what we're talking about, because it when is. I say I know you're not much of a reader, that doesn't mean I think you're illiterate, okay? <laughs> I know you can read. It's just not fun for some folks, so they don't do it. I no, get it. But you're There's, adding that you're, are, qualifying, no. you're qualifying that it's I'm not serious. fun. I love, dude, I love consuming information. Okay. And it's, then, not, and it's not just pictures like, oh, look at that. But I'm not in the I'm not in the long book 
format I think, sitting with the thing. But for knowing you, sakes. knowing you, I think if you got into this book, you might change that for this book. Uh, <laughs> because it's relatable. You can relate to some of this. Son this, of a gun. This guy is arrested, but he's never charged. And he's put on trial. He doesn't know why he's been arrested. Okay. But when he's on trial, it doesn't matter what he says. He further condemns himself. Oh, jeez. He's never charged with anything, but they find something wrong with every question they ask him, and he gives an answer. They find something wrong. Okay. So that has given rise to a phrase called the Kafka trap. Because it was written by Franz Kafka. It's called The Trial. And it's that question that you cannot prove yes. You right. cannot prove no. Right. So the only way that you can defend against such a question is get out of my face and get away from me. That's about all you can do. Do, do they have a comic book? Pictorial. There version. might have been a movie about it. There might have been a movie. I'll look. Not a silent one with cue cards because I don't want to read those. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you know. <laughs> now, watch. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the Scandinavian version. You're going to have to read the closed captions. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and, and, yeah, you know, you're saying let people go crazy, let people go nuts until it interferes with somebody else. That's yeah. what it's all about. It's all about interfering with somebody. Else. Right, right. But but isn't so I, I've come to the conclusion, especially, and I'll be honest with you, even on, on Facebook, and we're all friends here, so I'll just say, you know, people have so many varying, you know, concepts, and like they'll even agree or accept violent activities towards others, you know, willy-nilly if it justifies whatever. I mean, there's so many things that one could see. A reasonable person, um, what I deem reasonable, is keep your. It's always keep your hands to yourself, dude. Yeah. It's like it's like to me, since I can't. Number one, um, the world. If I were to run the world, let's say, hey, I'm gonna run the. I'm gonna run. I'm gonna be the guy running the world. You know, I could in my mind, I could fool myself into thinking that. I've got this thing unlocked. I know how things should be run. So I'm going to tell this guy and that lady, and this is how you do this. And that's how you, and boy, isn't everything wonderful, everybody, but it never, you can't, there's no human being. We're one brain in a specific body. And we've seen it throughout history. Julius Caesar became freaking um, dictator for life. And he mm -hmm. did a lot of good things, by the way, for the standards of, and, they came and freaking stabbed him. I don't know how many times because they said that this is not democratic. Um, uh, it, it, he's destroyed the Republic. So they stabbed the crap out of him, killed him. And then, you know, he dies. People found out even though he was dictator for life and Rome went into freaking decline short, you know, it just kept going down, down. And they, the, those people couldn't put it, it. They did it wrong. They did it by murder. We've seen tragedy and murder and 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 contra throughout the long view of history, and not one person can control. So my conclusion is, all those people in Rome back then, two thousand five hundred years ago, when when whenever those people, they're all dead. Yep. And those people, all the struggles, all the mm -hmm. the the fights, the battles. And the mm -hmm. arguments, and then the this, and the shipping over to the, and all that stuff is gone. So they spent their lives, and and you know, and we're in the same spot at this moment in time. And one day, we'll be a page turned, and keep on trucking down. So my conclusion has been, you know, and it's hard to do, is like, keep your hands to yourself. Yeah. Let it, you know, keep your hands to yourself. I, I can have opinions. I can share dialogue. This is interesting. I want to keep my hands to myself. Yeah. You know, the violent part, you can argue, you can make points intellectually, you can this and that. God forbid you can go and sue, you know, if there's a breach of contract and whatever. Uh -huh. But do it as civilized, bipedal mm -hmm. human beings, you know, and then I think that that, so that's my take on it, you know. A little bit close, yeah. 
to that is freedom doesn't mean anything goes. Freedom doesn't mean there are no rules. There have to be rules for civilized society. Without rules, the predators are free to break down your door. You know? Yeah. So there have to be rules, but the freedom to think the way you want to think, the freedom to say what you want to say. People in the 60s went to prison. Well, not prison. They went to jail for saying the four-letter F word in a private club to a paying audience. They were arrested for obscenity, taken from the stage by the local police, and they fought for the right to speak. And they won. Freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom to say what I think you should say, the way I think you should say it. There, there is there is decency like so but, is but, decency but the decency oh go ahead because decency but that's what they were getting them on well that's obscene in your opinion it's obscene well that's what let, let's let me let me add to that um there, there's a decency thing that people at, at some level should agree on and, and, and they may not but 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 there's a decency thing where it lets people get on with life and this and that. And you can have scenarios where people, well, excuse me, that kind of language is not, can you please stop? No, I'm not going to stop. Well, now you're now in my private establishment, you can take your happy ass on down the road or stuff like that. So in that, those scenarios, it should be left to specific little scenarios. That was the point. It wasn't left to that. These were paying customers who went to see a comedian. We're talking about Lenny Bruce, George Carlin. Yeah. People knew how Lenny Bruce spoke. They knew how George Carlin spoke. They paid their admission. They wanted to go see these people. And yeah. someone outside who was not invited, who didn't pay the price of admission, came in and arrested the man on stage and took him away. So you had the higher up saying, you can't hear that. That's what they fought for. We've gone 180 degrees in the opposite. Now you have to be careful for what you say. So George Carlin is long dead. Lenny Bruce is long dead. What they fight for, what they fought for, is dead along with them. So you're absolutely right. All of the struggles that they went through for freedom, for your right to say what you think, whether it be right, wrong, or indifferent, that's not their call to make. You have the right to say it. Well, and there's forums, and there's forums to butt heads, mm -hmm. whether in public, um, town halls, or bookstores that have the reading of a controversial whatever, or online, or by the phone, or get and gather, or whatever the case. But I could be standing in front of. I, Someone that is completely opposite to whatever I internally believe and is the foundation of my, you know, I envision, you know, this is the world as I envision. This is what glues my psyche together and stuff. And I have no business touching a hair on that yes. person's head. You're absolutely right there. My right to swing my fist ends at anybody else's nose. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that. And you're right. There is common decency. You treat people as a civilized person. You treat people the way you would want to be treated. Right. So, and you take people one-on-one. -on -one. But above and beyond that, when you have a group of people who have made it their sole mission to analyze everything you said, to make sure you got your commas in the right place and you're using the periods or full stops where you should be. Everybody, everybody now has to be careful of what they say. So that bit of freedom has been taken away. That's where I'm going with this. There is no freedom. There's no independence. There's no liberty being taught. Now what's being taught is you have to think the way I think. And 
because George Carlin said it is best himself. We think in language. So the easiest way to control your thoughts is to control your language. I mean, we've been set up through the system, at, at, you know, we, it, you know, a whole lifetime of, because, you know, abstract thought. I mean, look, you can't be abstract all the time because we'd be just like, I don't know, bouncing back and forth onto trees and rolling around in the dirt and saying, ha, ha, ga, ga. Uh, you know, there, there has to be some structural, you know, I am completely pro tradition. And at the same time, it's a funny, sort of perplexing scenario. Uh, totally pro breaking down tradition. It's a weird thing, but it depends on what and for yeah. what purpose. It's okay in 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 the arts, uh -huh. in literature, um, all the you know in these things. It's okay to test the bounds in an intellectual way, but when it comes to, look, my biggest, here's the thing, I, I, I've yet to get over, and I, again, I'll come clean for, for our, our audience, and, and, and everyone, I, I'm yet to get over a, 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 a frail woman in California protecting her business, getting hit by two by fours by huge people because of something that happened all the way in Minneapolis, um, or as an excuse for that. I, that and then the other one, another guy protecting his store, being after he's dead, and it was filmed and, and broadcast. You know, after he's dead, people are still kicking him. Mm -hmm. They killed him in front of his store, and they're kicking him. And you can see his legs are dangling. What? What is that? And so, those two are just sadly to say these are examples. These are actual human beings, right? But mm -hmm. that. I can't get over what that means. I know what it means. Don't get me wrong. I am quite aware of what it means and 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 the repercussions of it. Mm -hmm. and, but I can't get over that 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 visual. Yeah. That 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 all of it, right? Yeah. The the visual, the the amount of people willing to commit damage and 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 hurt to people in the name of, of something that I don't want to say is an abstract, but it's so far. When you deal in groups, if I, if you, if you, if you offend me in a damaging way, it could be political, it could be physical, but, and I, choose to condemn all Oregonians. Mm -hmm. I've lost that righteous, you know, rebuttal to but what was been done to me because I am now grabbing a whole group and saying they must punish, be punished for what one person did. And maybe that person could have been justified. Not just, I don't know, not that I'm comparing, but I'm saying that you can't deal with people in, group, in groups. You have to deal with people individually. Right, exactly. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to deal with people one-on-one. -on -one. But I want to go back to something that you said a minute ago. And it's this con this word that I keep hearing all the time, offense or offensive. What happens when you're offended by something? I submit that if anything anybody says offends you, that's your problem because it's your judgment. Your judgment gives you that feeling of offense. But what happens to you? What is the consequence of being offended? Do you get cancer? No. Does it end your life? No. Maybe you have a little bit of an ego problem. Or maybe you need to think things through, or maybe you just need to grow up. You know, offensive is in the eye of the beholder. And that's what guys like Lenny Bruce and George Carlin went to jail for. And Larry Flint went to jail for. Now, I'm not supporting anything that any of these guys said or did, published or produced. But they had the right to do it and say it. And they have they fought 
for their freedom from incarceration to be able to do it. And people and, have a right not to consume their exactly. material. You have a right not to consume it. And it's know? an unfortunate look, it's an unfortunate. Here's the thing. Here's here's the problem. It's an unfortunate thing that let's say take um Larry Flint. Uh, let's take him. You know, he brought a lot of joy to the world. Um, let's take him for for for, 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 for a moment. Um, that's not very traditional. No, you, you can make the argument that that it's traditional in in, in many senses, but, but closed but doors, <laughs> it, behind closed doors, but not out the. So you can make you can make a personalized argument and and say, well, I've concluded that you know this nudity thing is harmful to our kids to our society husbands and wives and it, the resentment and you know uh you're objectifying and this and that and i could make those arguments and i, I could actually be 110 percent correct and by the way in many ways those 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 things pointed out i i think to a certain degree are, are correct but the True. difference the difference is that you can't go ahead and become a dictator and impose because our society, thankfully, up until, you know, whatever, we're able to choose our own direction and consume materials, um, buy and sell, um, freaking, you know, to and fro, uh, interact right. with those who we don't want to or, or we do want to. There's things that are already in place. And so even though I may disagree with the Larry Flint. Yeah. Which at the same time I kind of agree because it's not like it's not like I never you know uh, read one of those like, magazines, but but the point is that I can see the the the, the actual consequences of things like that. But who am yes, I? You am may I? believe those consequences with every fiber of your being, but your only real choice is not to purchase the magazine. Right. You and I have we have every right to our opinion. What we don't have is the right to demand other people conform to our by force. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just simple. You know, it, it, it really is. And what you, what you are seeing is more and more, as a matter of fact, is pushback against that because people are starting to see, well, wait a minute. This guy said something 35 years ago when he was a teenager mm -hmm. that the person complaining probably said himself, but it's a gotcha moment. It's not about equality. It's not about uh, racism. It's not about sexism. It's not about any of those things. It's 100% about gotcha. You know? There's a reason why Kevin Hart didn't get to do the Academy Awards. It was a gotcha moment. Somebody decided they didn't want Kevin Hart to do it, so they went looking for something that they could hang him with, and they found it. You know? Uh, when you think about all of the quote-unquote heroes that have been taken down, it's always something that somebody went looking for um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know, that's it, it, to take it back to politics for just a few minutes. I don't know if you remember the elections of the nineties when Bill Clinton said, Oh, I smoked it. I tried it, but I didn't inhale. Yeah, I remember. And it, it became a joke. Mm -hmm. If he really honestly <laughs> wanted to be frank with them, he would have said, yeah, I inhaled. And then I drank the bong water. That was 30 years ago. Who cares? Let's talk today. Yeah, but you know that that, that little that little statement probably got him a lot of um, <clears throat> kudos from a lot of people. It did from a lot of people, but not from anybody that really mattered. Well, you know, I mean, but then he tried to get, then he went on Arsenio Hall and played the saxophone, which was actually pretty cool. But I saw that episode. It, so did I. That was actually kind of cool. I saw it when it happened, that, that oh, episode. Me too. me too. I used to like to watch Arsenio Hall. But it's this constant under-the-microscope thing 
you know, it's one thing to hold our elected officials to a higher standard, hold our politicians to a higher standard. I agree with that because these are people that are supposed to be working for us and too many of them forget it. I agree with holding those in authority to a higher standard, but some mope like me on the internet, I try to be non-controversial. I try to, I'm a live and let live kind of person. I have my opinions on what I think is right or wrong, but there's only that. They're my opinions. They go no further. I have no right to try to impose them on anybody else. I've raised my kids. That's part of me is done. And now I just try to give away what I've learned over the years to anybody who wants to hear it. And if they want to hear it, great. If they don't want to hear it, there are a billion channels on YouTube. Find something you like. But thanks for watching. You know? <laughs> and, and, there's, and there's really nothing that one could do. I mean, there's also the the flip side of that. Mm -hmm. That as much as we, we know, mm -hmm. I mean, we could be totally freaking wrong oh, on, yeah. on, on some things. Um, but have rationalized it it's very hard for one a person to say man i was wrong on this 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 and that because number one it would have to be so blaring i mean you'd have to be standing there with an axe in an alleyway and and, and come to your senses and say oh wait this isn't right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know it, it has to be that extreme because human beings are, are geared to always like like um like defend or 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 I forget what the word is. There's a word, confirmation bias. Um, we're we're and we're all because we're all human. We all have the same um, to differing degrees, and we our our vantage point from our from where we're at. We always protect that, but we, I, so so you know I always leave out the leave in the possibility of I can be wrong, but there's some fundamentals. Like the don't hurt other like that. I don't, there's no way I'm going to, because what's the alternative to that? You know, you know psychopathic to take it right back to the age of aquarium. We're in our own fish bowls and we only know what we know. And I'm wrong more than I'm right. I, I, I freely and openly admit that I know what I have done, what has worked for me. That may not be the best way for somebody else. But it's worked for me. And if somebody wants to hear my experience, I'm happy to share it. But I'm not going to go out and try to impose or go on your timeline and tell you you're doing something wrong. Or try to talk you out of doing something that you have your mindset on. Unless it's going to get you killed. If it's going to get you killed, I might have a few words. You know. But we're here for a short time. And there are no second rides. So that we're aware of. We're aware of. So I think what we have forgotten with all of this freedom that we supposedly have, I think what we've forgotten is our ability to enjoy it. Oh, that's out that that's that's totally and, true. You know, get out and see, meet people, do things. You know, um, help a buddy out if you can and just live life. Yeah. Enjoy life and quit, quit sweating the minutia that doesn't affect you. It doesn't matter to me what somebody says on Twitter. I really don't care. Doesn't matter what somebody says on Facebook. I is really is minutia is minutia that that little jam between the toes that happens after a long day out in the sun and walking around? Yeah, or or yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know, I agree with you. Um, I I agree with you. Um, but you know, at the same time, I like a good um a, a good back and forth. So I'm always, for the most part, I'm I'm pretty much open for a a, a debate. Mm -hmm. Um, because of what we've talked about in the past, I, I want to see, I want to see between two people or, or a few people, if, if one's reasoning, it's kind of like checking, you know, it, I like that process. 
it, but it's an exhausting process as well. And I acknowledge that, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not beyond uh, entertaining a, a um, what you call a, um, a back and forth in a civil Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like, all right, you disagree with, I'm going to hack you to death, you know, Martha, bring the chains out and, and grab the dog. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know. <laughs> so you're not going to start a Miami league of the uh, medieval fighting oh, in the ring? Dude, I have to, I, actually, to be honest with you, opposed to that, um, as opposed <laughs> to that, I saw a commercial, a YouTube commercial, which I st I did stick around for, and it's this this roll r round sort of like plastic thing, and what you do, it's a massager, and what you do is you put it on, you lay on it, and you let it roll. It's got an indent it, it indented for your your spine, so it, your spine doesn't get hurt. You just roll it, and it cracks your back. So I'm <laughs> I'm more on that level of looking for that kind of pleasure. <laughs> That, that's that's where my pleasure seeking is at. See, I wonder if that dude could uh, embed one of those in the seats of his uh, little car he bought off of AliExpress. That's funny. You know what? Um, as as we, I think that we're wrapping up, kind of, sort of. As we do that, I'm going to look for that that video. Okay. Yeah, I would appreciate it because I want to see that. I'd like, I really like to see that because I just know it. And this was going to be a topic I was going to see about branching into. What is it about us guys? I just know what's ha going to happen is if that video gets a lot of views, there are going to be more people ordering those suckers and hot rodding them over here. And I I, uh, I'm predicting it now, July 28th, 2020, as we record this. By next year, people will be racing those things somewhere. They're probably already doing it overseas, but I mean, somewhere in America, people will be racing those things. Well, I have. And I, that was going to be my question to you. What is it about men, males, guys, that makes us want to do stupid stuff like this? We will buy a perfectly good vehicle. And then have it, we might drive it the way it is for the first six months. But after that, we will have it torn apart and we're modifying this and we're changing that. And we're trying to improve it and this, that, make it flashier. What is it about guys that makes us do that? We got to have the faster car and the speed limits are still the same. It's it's all about you know, competition and, and, and doing it up and, and being involved in a fo focused sort of, it's, you know, it is what it is, man. I, 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 I can see that on the racetrack. I really can. I can see that on the racetrack. You gotta be better than the guy in the next lane. I get that. I really do. But I don't think that extends to main street. That you reminds know? me, I've got to grab my glue gun and glue the dash center dash uh, with hot glue because the plastic guard keeps falling out. So that's my uh, th that's going to be my contribution to. Let, let me let me let me let me ask you a question about. And again, this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to pose anything on. It. Yeah. You're going to use hot glue in the hot Miami sun in your car. Yeah, it'll form because what I wanted it to do is it'll bond. It'll form a clip mm -hmm. on the back of the the thing. And I'll test it out. The other thing I could do is caulking. That's actually uh, 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 it's like some sort of silicone caulking. That's actually a solution that Greg uh, had given me the other night. Uh, overhead cam. Mm -hmm. I must have missed that. Uh, or snow cam snow overhead. Snow crusher? Snow crusher. I must have missed that hangout. Right. Yeah, he said, well, why don't you try hot glue? You got a hot glue gun? I said, sure. Oh, okay. okay, that's a good idea. So you listen to the Canadian. The yeah. guy, the guy who, if it gets seventy degrees, he's in a he's in his Bermuda shorts and flip flops. Hey, dude, that guy's got some experience, man. He's got experience at thirty below zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I started saying I'm going to take some screws, I'm going to drill some pilot holes, and screw it right into the freaking console, the the plastic of the console, in four parts, and just and that's it. Because all I want is for it not to freaking move every time. Because I got bungee cords sticking, uh, oh. holding it <laughs> together. And every time I break, the thing goes, wah, wah, you know. I'll back off of that. I think hot glue would be better than bungee cords. Well, we'll try it and, and I'll, I'll give an update. But um, I did post that on the Facebook. 
And I, I let's wrap this up, guys. I think we, we did a, a, a nice roundabout show. I think we did. We went everywhere and some places maybe we shouldn't have gone. But it's my edit, so I can fix it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd leave it all in, but that it's your edit, so you yeah. you know what to do. Well, I stumbled over a few words and you know how I how I am. So all right. Well then yeah, okay. We can go ahead and get out of here. Uh did you guys notice I am back on the correct side? Uh, the you folks on YouTube. Yeah. And uh Jim Dockerel, I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you. Hold on. Whoa. Oh man. That's why I haven't worn this thing. We've got we've got just for our listeners, um, Jim Dockrell's been calling out Mark Lindsay for oh half a year because one day Mark said that he'd bring uh, that he'd bring into the uh, into the show a um, head bandana or a headband eighties uh, nineteen eighties style and and Jim's been been you know calling him out ever since. Well, today. <laughs> We we we're looking at Mark Lindsay sporting a 1980s. You know, I, roll. <laughs> I don't know if this is more Mark Knopfler or Tommy Chung. I haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're parked, man. But you know what though? Now looking at it, they they were they did work, dude. Yeah, they did. I mean, at least here in Miami. It kind of did keep your forehead, you know, clear of sweat. And I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna. I, I might just adopt this. I might, you know, see if I can talk Linda into cutting up a few old raggedy towels and, you know, tie them on the back of the head. And... Dude, I am totally. Now that I see you with it, dude. Number one, I feel like we're back in 1987 in the back part of my friend's house lifting weights and listening to ACDC and with the big mirror and just looking at our, at our, our muscles and say, am I pump yet? Am I pump yet? Um, I'm going to freaking go and purchase one too. Oh, Jim, that's not, I'm not suggesting that that's a, a dare, but I am going to be looking at head bandanas because you know what, what the heck, man? I'll have you listening to Mark Knopfler before you know it. You'll buy the Dire Straits Brothers in Arms album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got too crazy. Yeah. See, now I got to go talk to Steve Dillon over at Harneal Media about uh, making up a bunch of headbands with my logos on them. You might see these on my merch store pretty soon. Hey. I think it's a great idea. I kind of think it, man. Let's bring back the 80s, man. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's land the plane. You guys have a good evening. Catch you next time. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>